Hello everyone. Welcome to a new week. I hope you had a really great weekend. And for those of you who celebrated the holiday, I hope you had a joyous holiday. And for those of you who didn't get to spend it with your family, I'm very sorry about that. But I'm, I'm hoping that for the most part you had a really great day. So first of all, I apologize for the lighting. You get the beautiful view of my refrigerator. The lighting in here isn't great this morning, so I'm doing the best I can. Um, shout out to my friend Jonathan, who gave me this beautiful um, Utah coffee mug that I'm drinking out of this morning. So I'm all set and ready to go. A little bit groggy, but you know what? It's all good. So here I wanted just to give you a little snapshot of what to expect for this week. As you know, we have an exam this week and what I want you to just focus on uh, up until Thursday when the exam opens up is just prepping from everything that we've done since the last exam. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time walking you through how this is going to work because obviously you're not coming to class to take the exam. You're going to do it at home. So this is new for both of us. What a, what a fun challenge, right? So the format of exam two is going to be the same exact format as we did in exam one. And if you've had me as a professor before, you know I kind of dig this little format of, of what, I'm, what, what I do for exams because I like a little bit of quantitative and critical thinking in terms of multiple choice and understanding of concepts, but then what I'm really interested in is understanding how you apply those concepts and tell me about it in some short answers and then finally a long reflection question. So that's exactly what you're going to have. You're going to have, just like we did last time, you're going to have 20 multiple choice questions and you're going to take those questions just like you would in any of the hot or not or knowledge checks or anything else that we've done in Canvas. So that's going to be very familiar to you. The second part, which before um, you, you wrote old fashioned school with your pens and pencils on paper, hey, we're going to do this typing. So the second part is short response. There's five of those. And what I want you to hone in on the short responses is it's, it's not as much um, writing novels as it is short, concise answers that gives me enough information that I know that you're getting the concept. And make sure that you look at the questions carefully because sometimes I will have more than one question within that overall overarching question. So pay close attention to that. The third one is worth 10 points, and that is one question. And sort of like I've done in the past, this is going to be a reflection question. So I'm going to have you think about all of the things that we've talked about in the class and all of the concepts you've learned and, and reflect on it. And I'll have some questions. I'll, I'll, I'll have a question for you on that. Um, thinking about maybe a couple of the things that really stood out to you in, in the class. So that, that's the format, same as last time. It's just delivered in a different way. So let me talk, talk to you a little bit about how it's going to be delivered. So here are the instructions. So exam number two will be taken through Canvas. So you're going to go into your consumer behavior. You're going to, to find um, the, the exam, and I'll show you where that is on the next slide. But what I want you to know is I've structured this a little bit differently. I know that your lives have changed. I've spoken with many of you. Some, some of you um, have children at home. Some of you have changes in your work schedule. And so what I wanted to do is to make this very flexible for you as much as possible. So I'm opening the exam up at 8 a.m. on Thursday. So you will have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday to take the exam. But note, this, just like you were in class, this is a timed exam. 
It's 100 minutes that I'm going to give you. So I'm giving you a little bit of cushion time because I know it's different. You're not going to have all your notes in front of you. Hopefully you do, but I don't know if y'all have printers at home or not. And I have a lot of stuff, as you know. So I'm giving you a little bit of extra time to complete the exam. Um, but one thing you have to note is this is a timed exam. You can't start and stop and start on Thursday and finish on Saturday. You have to dedicate 100 minutes to getting this exam done in one shot. So please, you know, find yourself a cozy little comfortable place without distraction. And I know that's really hard because you have, you're full of distractions. You're trapped at home, just like me. So, so, so know that, that I'm thinking about that and I want you to prepare to, to have some quiet time in a quiet place where, where you, you can fully think and not worry about, you know, the little ones coming in or your roommate saying, hey, that sort of thing. So, so just know you have to take it all at one time. Just like in, in my regular course um, lecture, this is open book. It's open note, it's an open exam. Meaning you can have your textbooks, you know, your Nudge and your Caldini book. You can have anything, your notes that you've taken from, from my videos or from our lectures. You can certainly open up your canvas and, and look at any of the, the videos or the slides or the, you know, the, the TED Talks and, and short videos that I, I've shown. Um, but, but please go back and, and review because there's a lot of content here. Know that it's open and the reason it's open is because there is so very much of it. But unless you, unless you prep and know where your content is and being able to you know, flip black, back if you need to, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a challenge. So be prepared. But one thing I do ask, I know this is the virtual world now, you don't have me as a monitor, please take the exam on your own. And you, you know I'm a fan of, of working in teams and that is all good, but just know <laughs> for an exam it's not okay. And just know that I will know, I have tools to know whether you're working with someone else or not. Um, the, the answers are gonna be mixed up. Um, they won't be the same, it'll be different for everyone. So, so know that if you were to work as a pair on this, it's not gonna work because you're gonna run out of time. It's just too complicated. But I don't have to talk to you about that because you're all rock stars and you don't need to know that. But for me, I need, I need to say it as an instructor. So if you have any questions on that, read through this quickly, find the exam in uh, where it's located in Canvas, reach out to me with any questions. Um, so if you navigate into our module, uh, marketing 3450, consumer behavior. Note where we are now, we're on week 14. We're almost there, we're almost there. Uh, week 14, right here under the module, under pulling it all together in exam two is the exam itself. It's not gonna populate, it's not gonna be available for you to take until the 16th at 8 a.m. And then it will be open for you to take until it will close 11.59 Sunday night. Remember, you're gonna pick a time. It's a time test, 100 minutes. That's where you find it. So once you click on that, um, here's what it looks like. You can click on it now and it'll tell you when it opens up, its time is 100 minutes, how many questions there are. There's 26 questions, as you know, 20 multiple choice, five short answer, and one long reflection. So that's where you're gonna go. I will be available during these test times. I know it's you know hard for me to be available 24/7 when you're taking this at 3 a.m. when you know maybe that's your only quiet time. But I will try the best I can to be available as much as possible. Be sure to contact me uh, probably via text 651-808-0196 if you're having troubles getting in. All right, so let's talk about the exam topics. So because this is such a, this is a theory course, it's a, uh, a theory-based course with a lot of content. Um, I, most of the questions are going to be from the second exam. 
So that's going to be from week 7 to week 14. I have a list of what those are, and they're the exact content that I have within the modules, um, the reading materials, some of the videos that I have uploaded um, from Ted and Caldini and some of the other ones within your topics, articles, etc. In addition to the lectures that I had before we were quarantined and the videos that I, I pulled together since the quarantine. So you can see here are the topics social norms, reference groups, opinion leaders, then we've got households, families, social status, communication theories, advertising, nudges and freedom. Um, I want you to, to reference um, the, the Thayer Nudge book and there'll be some persuasion questions from Caldini. Most of those I know you're very familiar with, we've talked a lot about them, but some of those might go back a little bit into the first part of the the semester because these concepts really sort of flow through everything um, and then you know consumers as a shopper and post-purchase evaluation so so focus on week 7 to 14 look at the content uh, if you have time to refresh yourself on some of the videos um, it's it's important I will note that um, there, there will be at least one question about a video that we had within the lecture before quarantine. So we spent some time reviewing some other experts and discussing those in class. So take, go back and take a look at your notes from those days. Go back and take a look at the the, the lecture slides that I have posted and note um, videos that um, that are in there. Um, just to give you a little tip because I'm nice, I think I might have a question in there from Dan Ariely's video. If you remember that, Dan and his talking about um, the uh, contracts, social contracts. So take a look at that one. So I wanted to just spend a few time, few minutes pulling it all together. I had intended last week to do a little note on this, um, but I thought it would be a little bit more applicable to blend it in with studying for the exam. So let's just take a minute to discuss where we've been. Um, where does consumer behavior come from? This won't be in the exam, but I want you to keep in mind that Consumer behavior is from a number of different disciplines from anthropology, sociology, psychology, economics, and marketing. We pull all of these concepts together. And why do we study it? We study it because um, as marketers, what we know is, is that the human brain really does drive our decision making and, uh, and the human brain is so complex that it's really important for us to understand at a high level how we can influence that brain and where the mindset of the buyer is through their journey. So if you remember we talked way in the beginning about the black box model. And as marketers, if you look at the left side of this diagram here, we have a lot of levers and triggers and strategies that impact whether people buy or not. And so we, we work very hard on the four Ps, our marketing mix. We also know that within um, the strategy of marketing, we have to consider the external factors, just like we're in now. Who would have ever thought that we can't leave our house to go shopping at certain times of the day? That's just bizarre for us. So there's external forces that also impact how we buy. And then if you look at the buyer, the buyer themselves, they have product choice, they have where they're going to shop, how they're going to buy, what they're going to spend, all of the output, the decisions that they make. But what's missing in the middle is really what consumer behavior is all about, and that's the black box. Those are the things that we don't know or we don't have control of. Or maybe we can influence, and that's the mind of the buyer. All of the, the physiological and mental things about us as an individual 
that impacts those buying decisions. So that's what we try to aim to look for in consumer behavior. And finally, the factors that influence consumer behavior, psychological, the way we think, personal, who we are, how we've grown up, um, cultural, socioeconomic, all those things about us, and then social. How are we impacted by the people around us? So I just want you to take a minute on your own to go back from the beginning of class and just think about some of those things in your own life maybe or maybe as a marketer that you've experienced in terms of psychological and personal and social and those things that um, impact consumer behavior. And if you remember, what we do is we learn about these particular um, elements of consumers and we try to group them into uh, various groups, which we call segments. Once we have a segment, then we prioritize of all those different groups who might be interested in our product, who might we target and based on who they are and their likes and their beliefs and their attitudes and their personality and their psychology, how do we create a message that resonates to that particular target? So when we think about psychological, we're thinking about personality and self-image, mood, cognition, the way they, their brain thinks. Uh, when we think about social, it's about how you grew up, your background, your culture, your personal issues. Are you a male or female? How old are you? What culture are you from? Do you have a subculture that you resonate with? And then finally, your personal attitudes. These are your attitudes and opinions that belong just to you. And how do those attitudes and opinions impact your buying behavior. Are you an impulse buyer? Do you, um, what do you do after you buy something? What are your shopping motives? So you can see that all of these things together are what we are pulling together to understand consumer behavior. So we started off with just what I showed you, the psychological, social, and personal elements of who people are. We take all of that information and we put together groups of different people that have commonality. Once we have those different groups, we have to prioritize because we only have so much time and resources. We're going to prioritize of those groups, who are we going to target? And we're going to hone in on that target audience and we're going to figure out, based on all of these things, their psychology, their interests, where they come from, their commonalities, and we are going to come up with a positioning statement or a statement of value that resonates with that group. So that's how we fed into segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Once you have your target audience and what you know is of value to them, then we create a buyer's journey, as you know. Where are they in the buyer's process? Um, what decision-making process they're in? How are we going to reach them? What are we going to say to them? What will the message be? How will we deliver that message through a particular marketing channel? And how are we going to measure it? Then we think about all of the different consumer behavior influences that we might be able to uh, use as a lever or a strategy based on where that person is in their journey. And then finally, messaging and, and advertising. So if you think of everything that we've talked about in the semester, you can kind of fit it all on this one page. And so I would note this might just be something important for you to look at as you consider your reflection question that might be on the exam, hint, hint, all right, just saying. Okay, and all of this thing, everything on this page is driven by marketing research, meaning how do we understand the buyer and, and, and how do we get to know exactly what they're doing? And that could be on the front end before somebody purchases. It could be on the back end. 
but marketing research flows throughout the whole process. So hopefully that makes sense to you. I know you're all gonna do great on the exam. You did wonderful on the first exam. Study hard. Um, make sure you have all your materials ready. Make sure you have a good quiet spot and have 100 minutes of dedicated time to focus. If you have questions, the best way to reach me if you're having trouble is text me. Text me at 651-808-0196. Whoop, I got a boo-boo there. 651-808-0196. I have to fix that, sorry. Um, and then uh, if you need, if you want to have more, uh, if you have, have any specific questions, feel free to text me, call me. I will have office hours available um, Tuesday and Thursday from 9 a.m. to noon. So thank you all so very much, um, and I hope that you're safe and well. I'm thinking about you, I care about you, and have a fantastic day and rock that exam. I know you will. Take care.